Go with me to the book of Genesis, the 29th chapter and the 35th verse. I just want to leave a thought with you. Bishop, I'm glad to see you. I just can't call your name. <laughs> and First Lady, God bless you. If you'd be so kind to stand in reverence to the word of God. My wife was going to make this trip with me and uh, I told her she was under a contract uh, judge, I'll tell you who it is later, to sing, I mean to uh, speak at a church today and so he's a friend of mine and I said, oh, just tell him you're going with me and that codger pulled out his contract <laughs> so don't worry if he's watching me, we're going to talk when I get back <laughs> the word of the Lord says she became pregnant again and gave birth to another son. She said, this time I will praise the Lord. So she named him Judah, praise. Then she stopped having children. This time I will praise the Lord. That's what I'm gonna talk to you for the next few minutes. Look at your neighbor and repeat that subject after me and tell them this time, I'm going to praise him. Uh, look at somebody on the other side and say, this time, I'm going to praise him. You may sit in the presence of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, as saints of God, it is imperative, it is imperative that whatever we go through, we must learn how to praise God in the midst of it and certainly uh, at the end of it, and, 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 and perhaps that's why the Apostle Paul said, I've learned that whatsoever state I'm in to be content, it was the same Paul that said, in all things uh, give thanks. In many cases, we have not evolved to that point. Uh, however, this lesson brings finality to an issue that Leah had trouble dealing with. Preceding and including our lesson text, we have uh, the birth of four of Jacob's sons by Leah. The Bible gives us to know that Leah was not loved the way Rachel, her sister, was by Jacob. However, Leah was able to bear children and Rachel was not. Jacob, who had been noted as a trickster, was tricked by Laban, his uncle. Laban's two daughters were Leah and Rachel. The Bible tells us that Leah had pretty eyes, but Rachel had a beautiful figure and features. And Jacob fell in love with Rachel and desired to marry her. So her father told Jacob he would have to work for him for seven years and then he would give her to be his bride. After the seven years of work, Laban had this big wedding and in the evening he took his daughter Leah instead of Rachel and brought her to Jacob. For whatever reason, saints, Jacob didn't realize it was Leah until the next morning. The trickster had been tricked. Now when Jacob inquired as to what happened, Laban told him it's not our custom to give the younger daughter in marriage before the older one. He admonished him to finish the week of the wedding festivities with this daughter and then he would give him the other one as well. But he told him he would have to work another seven years. Jacob's love for Rachel caused him to comply. Because love will make you go the extra mile. Even though Leah was not loved by, uh, by Jacob, he, he was blessed. She was blessed to have children. And Rachel wasn't. My brothers and sisters, we must note how providence works. Because Rachel wants children, but she is blessed with her husband's love. While Leah wants her husband's love, but is blessed with children. No matter what happens in our lives, we must hold on to the fact that the Lord's thoughts and ways are far beyond our ways. Can I get a witness there? 
When the Lord saw that Leah was uh, loved less than Rachel, and that uh, is the meaning of the language in the third verse, the 33rd verse, the Bible tells us uh, that the Lord granted her a child which was actually a rebuke to Jacob for making a difference uh, between those that was uh, uh, that he was in equal relations to. My brothers and sisters, uh, this might have been a reality check for Rachel, who perhaps had some issues with her sister upon that account. But at the same time, a comfort to Leah so she might not be overwhelmed with the contempt of dealing with a husband that didn't love her. Well, I need to tell you some real life issues for a moment if I can. I, I, I've learned a long time ago that if an individual doesn't want to be with me, let them go. My brothers and sisters, too many people are constantly trying to make folk who don't want to be with them love them. There comes a time in your life that you have to learn how to let a thing go. If Joey doesn't want to call you or try to spend quality time with you, that's a good indication that he doesn't want you. And, and it goes back to a song I heard, and y'all excuse my secularization. If you don't want me, then don't talk to me. Go ahead. Free yourself. Don't come around for treats if you ain't going to be around when I need you. Uh, however, Jacob was married and uh, walking away is not as easy as it is in a non-committed relationship. No wonder the scripture says in the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians in the later clause of that 24th verse, God has put the body together and given special honor to the part that lacks. In other words, God had to compensate to the lack in Leah's life. However, let us know the names that Leah gave her children. They were expressive of her desire. She named her first child Reuben, which said, here's my son, because she said, certainly the Lord has seen my misery. Now my husband will love me. Well, I need to tell our young ladies that having a baby won't make a man love you. It's one thing to say this, but it's another thing to understand it. Ladies, let me say it one more time. Having a baby won't make a man love you. We have taken something that God expressly designed for love between a man and a woman, a husband and a wife, and we have cheapened it to no more than a lustful gratification. It has been misplaced on the agenda of many lives and used as nothing more than recreation, not realizing that it may resort in another innocent life being brought into the world. So therefore, I must reiterate that if a man really loves you, excuse me again, he needs to put a ring on it. Well, here I go again. Sex is for married folk. I ain't scared of y'all. Sex is for married folk. It, it's just not a feel-good recreational sport. And even then, if it ought to be the consent of both individuals to bring a child into the world, Leah promised herself that the children she bore for him would gain his affection. She called her firstborn Reuben with the misguided thought that Jacob would love her. Her second son, she named Simeon, which means hearing. She said, certainly the Lord has heard that I'm unloved and he also has given me this son. Again, she was not getting the love she desired and she named her third son Levi, which means joined or attached, which this expectation she said now at last my husband will become attached to me because I've given him three sons. I, I hope you understand that at some point you're going to have to come to a point in your life and understand that things don't always go the way man intends for them to go. Life crises have, have tried to come up with something that we have been involved
involved in and we try to make solutions, a man-made solution for problems in our lives. But I'm here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that man-made solutions won't solve a spiritual dilemma. Mutual affection is both the duty and comfort in the marriage relation and each partner should strive to recommend themselves to each other for the Bible says in the 7th chapter 1 Corinthians in the 33rd and 34th verses but he that is married careth for the things that are of the world he how he may please his wife there is difference uh, also between a wife and a virgin the unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord that she may May be holy both in body and in spirit, but she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. However, Leah, Leah thankfully acknowledges the kind providence of God in her situation, for she said in the 32nd verse, the Lord hath looked upon my affliction. In other words, the Lord took notice of her. And I come to tell you that no matter what you've been going through, no matter how hard your afflictions may be, God God knows exactly where you are. There were so many lessons uh, in this text. Leah says, because God has taken note of my affliction, he has given me a son. May I drop another nugget for our young sisters? Because uh, it has been said that sons uh, look after their mother. So ladies, if a man doesn't get along with his mother, let that be a red flag for you. You need to proceed with caution. Finally, after all that Leah went through, and, and please don't misunderstand this short dissertation because Leah was not wrong in having children because she was married, but her motive in having children was marred, and she had children for the wrong reason. It was legal, but not expedient. And so finally, Leah has her fourth son, and she called him Judah because Judah means praise. And she said, now I will praise the Lord. Isn't it amazing? And I'm closing here that we have to go through so much that we have to bump our heads so many times that we have to get ourselves in some dire situation before we learn that we should have praised him in the first place. Judah was, uh, he, he was a blessing to the world. Well, he, he, was, he was of the lineage that Jesus would come. And I must note to you, my brothers and sisters, that whatever is the matter of our rejoicing, it ought to be the matter of our thanksgiving. Fresh favors uh, should quicken us to praise God for former favors. Now I will praise uh, the Lord. Now I will give him glory now I will take my time and let him know that in spite of what I'm in, in spite of what I've been through, in spite of how the world is treating me, he still deserves some praise. Will you look at somebody and tell them in spite of what you're going through, he still deserves some praise. True praise is consistent with the acknowledgement of who God really is. My brothers and sisters, in regards to praise, we must note that sometimes God is praised for his inherent qualities. Psalm 104 and 1 indicates that we praise him for his honor and majesty. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty your praise should be a natural impulse and a delight to fail in praising God is to withhold God's glory for him for the 40th chapter of Isaiah and the 26th verse says lift up your eyes on high and behold who hath created these things that bringeth out their host by number he calleth them all by names by greatness of his might 
for that he is strong in power not one faileth we should not forget his mercy and his kindness but we are to give God the glory and honor and gratitude that we owe him we must earnestly cultivate the spirit and the habit of praise for men that are holy ought to praise God women who are devout ought to praise God David said in the 57th number of Psalms starting at the 7th verse he said my heart is fixed oh God my heart is fixed I will sing and give praise awake up my glory awake psaltery in heart I myself will awake early I will praise thee oh Lord among the people I will sing unto thee among the nation he said in the 103rd number of Psalm in the first verse bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name you've got to get to a place where you understand that you've got to fix your shoulders stand firm and let the devil know that in spite of where I am in spite of what you've been trying to do to me in spite of what you've been taking me through I still owe God some praise I still owe him some praise you may have had to go through some dumb stuff to get to where you are today you may have bumped your head a million times the devil may have told you you'd never be nothing but I came by to tell somebody that in spite of where you are in spite of the bruises on your life in spite of the pain you've experienced that you ought to praise God I tried to fix things on my own I tried to piece together the brokenness of my life I tried to have things the way I thought they should have been and to tell you the truth I should have gave up a long time ago I could have lost my mind a long time ago I could have been dead sleeping in my grave but when I look back over my life and see what the Lord has done for me why don't you do me a favor grab somebody by the hand pull on them and push them y'all ain't pulling nobody pull on them and push them and say neighbor I don't know what you've been going through but this time I'm going to praise the Lord I'm going to praise him for the breath that I breathe I'm going to praise him for the eyes that I have to see the goodness of the Lord I'm going to praise him because can't nobody do me like Jesus can't nobody love me like the Lord cause when I was down he picked me up when I was sad he made me glad tell your neighbor this time I'm gonna praise him this time I'm gonna bless his name this time I'm gonna shout the victory cause the devil thought he was going to sit on my lap and I was going to come to church and sit here like a bump on a log but point your hand down to the devil and say Satan you still a liar because I made up in my mind if I could get into the gate of the West Angeles church that I would give him praise because it seemed like cancer was going to eat your body when it seemed like your heart wouldn't beat right when it seemed like you were having a mental breakdown somehow some way God stepped in and made a way for you grab your neighbor one more time and say neighbor in spite of what you've been through, you owe him a praise. Shake their hand and say you should praise him 
because can't nobody do you like Jesus? I'm going to praise him. This time, I'm not making any apologies for me carrying on. Help me say this time, I'm not running after nobody. This time, I'm not naming my misery with soothing names. This time, I'm not tripping. This time, I'm not taking any more pills. This time, I'm not contemplating suicide. This time, I'm not going to have a pity party. But this time, I'm going to get out the business and give him some praise. Because praise is my weapon. Praise is my way to fight off depression. Praise in my ladder to climb out of this pit. Praise in my roadway to my destiny. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got to take it a little higher because God had made a way out of nowhere. Let everything let everything that have breath praise him. The devil tried to kill you, but praise him anyway. Tell your neighbor you ought to put a praise on. The hellhounds were after you. Put a praise on. They lied on you. Put a praise on. They talked about you, but put a praise on. This time. This time, this time, I ain't gonna close up in a room with a shade down. This time, I'm gonna give him praise. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here that'll say I owe him a praise? Is there anybody here that say I need the praise? Praise him. Get somebody on the other side of the room and tell them, neighbor, if I were you, I wouldn't wait till your battle is over. But I praise him now. Praise your way right out of depression. Praise your way right out of thoughts of suicide. To give God some praise. I got a right to give him some praise. Praise him. Praise him. Since you don't 